So welcome everybody. It is so exciting to have you here with us as we um, usher out <laughs> 2020. Um, listen, we're doing things a little bit differently today and I'm gonna get us started because we're gonna be talking about um, component performance reimagined. Um, now, this year has been a phenomenal year in many ways, at least if we look at all the positive things like how our chapters have stepped up to do some amazing things locally, how we've been able to pivot to a digital format, lots of different um, things are working. Some things maybe we're wrestling with still, right? The impact of lower revenue, the impact of some memberships that are declining or really, really stagnant, at least not meeting the original goals we had started out. Um, so the question uh, to us, I think, is what's the role components can play in helping us um, uh, really overcome those or really wrestle those things all the way away. Now, we've done some conversation around this. At the beginning of the year, we had a workshop in which we showed how we know components can lead to member engagement, can help us bring in new members, can help us strengthen renewals, can help us drive revenue. So we, we know that there are possibilities here, but the reality is, is that it's the game has changed. And so part of what we want to do is to touch on some ways you can mobilize your components as we go forward in this process. Now, I wrote recently, um, for the Event Guard blog, a, a post on projections for 2021 for chapters. And I surmise that probably one of the most important things is going to be as we're not able to have our large in-person events and we're not able to be in person with our members from our global or national standpoint, um, our components are going to become more important. And that is the reason why we are here today to have this conversation where we get a chance to talk about, well, then, how do we make that happen, right? So who's the we? Um, super delighted, Mark Prevost is here with me. Now he's the director of growth for Bill Highway. I think that means he's the one that's supposed to put the weight on, but I don't know. He'll maybe <laughs> tell you a little bit more. And of course I'm with Mariner Management. And speaking of which, um, we have been co-hosting these webinars for, I don't know, Mark, my gosh, has it been two years? Maybe it's, it's been more. I think it's been more, at least two years. Wow, I mean, we just have such a um, incredible um, uh, relationship here and opportunity to chit chat. I'm super delighted to be able to chat with you today about this particular topic. You're gonna hear a little bit more about Bill Highway and Mariner is of course your partner in all things around coaching chapters, coaching volunteer leaders and rethinking your structure. What makes me super excited about this conversation is I have been on the bandwagon to get us to think about how we support our chapters differently and that's what we're gonna actually talk about today. Our agenda is really quite simple. Um, we're gonna focus on data. We're going to talk about the power of data. We're going to talk about how using the right tools can help you really get a hold of that data and use it in meaningful ways that both help your components and help you, and most importantly, move the mission and meet the members' needs. So speaking of data, we'd like to start by getting some data from you. And we'd love you to ask this question. On a scale of one to five, how would you rate your relationship with components? So one is just poor. Um, five is everything we need, we get, and we can share things back and forth. And let's see, I'm loving, I'm loving already. Everybody is jumping in on this poll. We're gonna see lots of things. So I'm seeing a lot of people kind of coming in into towards the middle of that. Let's see, give a few more seconds here. All righty, yeah. So most of you say a three. So hopefully what we're gonna be able today to do to today is talk about how you can take those relationships and we can all get fives, or at least we can get fours, right? At least we have the ability to have a closer relationship from a data perspective. So in the chat, what I'd like to find out is what are some of the data challenges that you have when you talk about working with your components. And the reason why I wanna do this is because I want us to be able to answer the questions that are really, really are in your space right here. So what data challenges do you have with that? All right, let's go. Um, oh, thank you for sharing that. Appreciate that a lot. Someone shared my, the blog post. 
So let's get those chats going. And while we're doing that chat, while I'm hearing from you about what data challenges is, um, I'd like to ask a question. What if, what if you could help your chapters perform better and in the process gather data? You know, what if you had access to the data that helped them understand what was going on and you could use that data to support them. And in using that data to support them, you would also have data that could help you in terms of the whole association do a major, have a, have a major, uh, a really a gold mine, if you will. So I love it, Andrea. You were saying, who are they inviting to their events and who is attending their events? Ah, I love that conversation. Um, someone else are getting consistent and updated information from them, absolutely. And then Cindy, oh, amen, technology limitations. Well, let's jump in with the conversation because I think that we do have some data. Um, we have some data opportunities here and I'd like to toss it over. Mark, tell us a little bit more. You bet, Peggy, I'd love to, thank you. Um, you know, I get asked this question all the time. What is Bill Highway? <laughs> we really don't understand what you guys do. And I totally get that because we've got this wonky name, right, Bill Highway. So people say, are you a billing system or um, are you an AMS, right? So no, we're not a billing system. We're not an AMS. Um, if everyone understands what IMS, Personify, Impexium, Nimble, Netform, we all understand what they do. We understand what Higher Logic does. We understand what LMSs do. What does Bill Highway do? So, um, um, and, and the reason why I think folks sometimes have questions around that is because we really kind of sit on a shelf all by ourselves, right? So we like to define things based upon what we know. And, and Bill Highway solves problems that almost every association has, but didn't realize that there's a solution for. So, so we are um, what we call an association performance solution specifically for associations that have components. And everything that we do is designed to increase the ROI of your components increase engagement, increase um, um, retention, right? And we're gonna talk a little bit about how we do that and what all those things mean and why they're important. But one of the things to understand fundamentally about Bill Highway is that we are a software solution, but we're a software solution that's built on top of and integrated into a banking platform. And so we wind up automating and simplifying a lot of the day-to-day -day administrative details that volunteer component leaders have to, have to deal with. Things like banking and accounting and budgeting and filing 990s and all that kind of stuff that we make volunteer leaders do, right? No one wants to do that. And then we question, well, why can't we get volunteer leaders? So, so if we can automate and simplify all of that administrative work so that volunteers can spend more time um, focusing on the things that make volunteers want to volunteer, right? Like serving members and advancing the mission. Um, we make their lives so much easier, more efficient, and really give them a platform to better serve members. And so when, when an association rolls out Bell Highway to its components, and I'll use the word chapters, but we understand that you may call yours affiliates or networks or sections. So we'll kind of kind of use that chapter term um, um, as in, in, in a generic sense. But as associations roll out Bill Highway to their chapters, what we find is it very quickly goes viral across the chapter ecosystem because we provide them so much help. But the cool thing that, that begins to occur in doing that is that as they use Bill Highway to run their chapter, our system organically begins to collect data. Um, data around um, how members are engaging, which members aren't engaging, um, how your components are performing, how their financial situation is. And so all of these types of, of data components that, that if we can impact them and measure them and manage them, allow us to create this virtuous kind of cycle where we as CRPs um, help our chapters perform better. We give them tools to perform better. And then we get to see how they're actually doing, how members are engaging, right? Um, and can impact and help our chapters do a better job in that. 
So, so we're going to talk today about three types of data, um, what we call performance data, like chapter performance data, um, engagement data. Engagement data can be data around how members are engaging or non-members engaging, but engagement data in general, and then financial data at the components, at the component level, right? So, so what winds up happening is that in our AMS, we have all sorts of member engagement data. We have every time they sign up for a newsletter, we know that, or if they are interested in different um, um, uh, CE topics or learning programs or whatever that might be. But what happens is we have no visibility into how members are engaging at the component level. And if you're an association that relies upon your components to help deliver your mission to your members, and you really have no real-time visibility into how they're doing you know, in their, effectively in their jobs to do that, that becomes a problem. And that's one of the things that Phil Highway helps with. And that's one of the things that we're going to talk about today. Peggy, does that help answer your question? Absolutely. So, so three types of data, and we're going to work through each one of those um, in their larger formats over the next few minutes. So let's talk about engagement data, right? So we talk about this concept that um, that I just shared around many of our associations know a lot about their members as long as that engagement is happening at or stemming from the, the headquarters level, the national level, the global level, whatever that might be. Um, but we really have no idea of how members are engaging at our component ecosystem. Um, so what Bill Highway does is um, an association gets to offer Bill Highway to their components, to its components to utilize. Components love us. They, they absolutely love using Bill Highway because we simplify all the stuff that's difficult for them. We can talk more about that later. So as they're using something that they really enjoy, we begin collecting this data, um, this engagement data. And so now you have a fuller view of your member, not just from how they engage at the headquarters level, but also how they're engaging throughout your chapter ecosystem. Um, so, so this data then becomes important because we get to see, um, for example, at-risk members, right? So what will happen is an association based upon the data will begin to be able to draw correlations. And so you may see, for example, that, you know what? We've determined that if a member hasn't engaged in some part of our chapter system, in the last, I don't know, 121 days, we see that they're three times more likely not to renew yet next year, right? Because they're not perceiving the value of the association in their lives. They're not participating in their local chapter. Um, and so when it comes time to pay that, you know, $300 bill or $100 bill or $1,500 bill, whatever it is for membership next year, they're like, mm, I think I'm going to skip it this year. I really haven't used it a lot. So if we can in real time, let you know who's engaging, who's not engaging, so that you can proactively begin to put programs together and outreach to those non-engaging members. Now we can get ahead of retention instead of just looking at it you know, in the rear view mirror. So for example, if, I, if we took another poll, Peggy, and we asked everyone, how many of you measure retention? It's a poll that we would never do because everyone on, on this webinar today measures retention. But in Bill Highway's view, retention is what we would call a lagging indicator, right? So it's kind of an economics term. It's measuring something that happened last year or last whatever period we measure retention on. What Bill Highway says is, let's measure and influence everything that goes into retention, the leading indicators, so that we can drive retention instead of just measure it after the fact, right? So we're going to give you data around member engagement, around financial performance of your chapters, around just general operating performance of your chapters so that you can begin to make data-driven decisions on how to invest, how to better mentor, and how to engage members that might not be engaging today. Make sense? Absolutely. So here's an example. With Bill Highway, if you have chapters that allow non-members to attend events, we know that within Bill Highway. 
So wouldn't your membership team love to have a very qualified list of every individual who's, a, who's in, engaging at a chapter level that's not a member of your association, right? So maybe, maybe you're in a nursing association and they had an event for, um, for uh, nursing members of the chapter and they brought a coworker who's not a member of your association. You will never know that in your AMS because it happened at the chapter. So Bill Highway then captures that information and then can share that back into your AMS. So now your membership team has a way to go out um, and, and, and market or talk about the benefits of joining your association, right? So that's just one way. Um, um, as I mentioned, we may have members that aren't engaging. Wouldn't you like to know that? If you really rely upon your components to help deliver the mission of your association out to your members, um, then by all means, you need to see how they're doing that. So let's identify those members who are engaging, aren't engaging. Um, um, so, so the data then becomes something that we now have visibility and we can make it actionable. We're here to four because typically an association is headquarters and then all of this distributed ecosystem of components that we really don't have the ability in real time to see that, all of that begins to change. And so the conversation then moves to, hmm, if I had this type of data around member and non-member engagement at my component level, what could I really do with that kind of data? Well, you know, what I'd love to do is I'd love to find out um, what data at the member engagement at that level they're already collecting. So let's see if we can, if we can launch a poll and uh, ask this question. And I, th there we go, awesome. So what data, about member engagement at the component level. So what I'm talking about is what's happening locally, right? Um, what do you know? Do you know simply the number of programs and activities being offered? Maybe you know the types of events being offered. Maybe you know stuff about the members that are attending it. Maybe you know stuff about the non-members that are attending it. Are you able to take that information and get registration data and trends that may be plugging into why somebody would or wouldn't um, hit that renewal yes button? So we've got activities, we've got types of events, we've got all stuff about members, all stuff about non-members, and then also that sort of that collective data or trends. So we've got some folks coming in here and I love this. And by the way, um, someone did ask this question about Bill Highway supporting registration and um, they do in fact, it's a pay, if it's a paid event, they support all the accounting processes, reconciliation, journal entries, all this kind of stuff. So, um, and I'm sure that Mark can answer more specific questions. I'm the person that can answer all the really general questions and Mark can do the, the rest of it. Excellent. So what I love about this, Mark, if you'll notice that they are pretty much collecting this sort of programs and activities that are offered and types of events. And then it goes down from there. So while, you, while I've got you guys, throw in, um, th throw in the chat, how are you currently collecting what you are collecting? So if you're collecting programs and activities, is that a report that they're doing or is that real time? Maybe you're offering registration to them. So tell us a little bit about that. Annual survey and report is one, one step. Okay, so what I, um, there we go. Uh, I'm gonna check that close and there we go. All right, so the reason why I think that this question in particular, and Mark, what you've set up in this conversation already is so important, is because we're really talking about what? Chapter ROI. And I love it because John already posted in there. He basically said, how do we get the C-suite and the chapters, I'm reframing this a little bit, but all people around here, how do we get them to see that connection and how one impacts the other? Well, particularly now when we've got a really tough, difficult um, economic scenario going on, so budgets are, are actually tightening um, it's, and the chapter's bottom lines are even shrinking, right? So how do we help the C-suite understand how important chapters are to the global or the national's perspective? So part of what um, I think that we really have to think about is 
how can we take the again, member engagement, say, for example, that Mark is collecting, how can we take that and invest it back into the components? How, we can, how can we prove that resources um, are invested in them are justified for the national organization and will make a difference at the local level? How do we support an argument that says, hey, yeah, let's do, for example, some of you have, have given your chapters lots of different access to digital platforms. How do we really continue those resources in, 20, in, in 21? How do we have the data rather than the assumptions? You know, how many times, how many of you have a staff member who said those chapters are just a pain? Hmm. I think that if we had the data, we could answer that question with more, with more, um, with uh, more confidence, right? So this intel will help us understand all of this. So really, I think that the question we have to ask ourselves is what if you knew every touch point that members and non-members had the component level? How would that improve the engagement scoring many of us are already doing and take the conversation in the C-suite up another level? So let's talk about what you could do with that. What I'd love to do is to take the conversation to how do we get chapter performance and activity data? And then how do we actually measure that component performance? Let me throw out there, whoops, a chat question before I bring Mark to the table. Let me bring out a chat question. How do you do either of these things, get performance data, activity data, or measure component performance. And while you are currently chatting that in, I'm gonna switch the conversation and I'm gonna queue up Mark to tell us a little bit more. So Peggy, I love that last poll. Um, I think um, if I remember some of the results, the, the top result was the number of programs or activities often offered and then right behind that, the types of events offered, and then on down to member attendance, non-member attendance and different trends. Every, every item on that poll is exactly what Bill Highway um, captures and can provide back to you, not at the end of the year, but as it's happening, right? And so, so it's interesting, most associations will tell you, yeah, you know, at the end of the year, we have some type of reporting that we ask the chapters to provide back to us. We ask them to send us some financial information. We ask them to send us some information about what type of events they had, how many, um, right. which by the way, is one more manual task that we're asking already burdened volunteer leaders to deal with, right? So I'm a teacher and I've got kids at home and I'm doing online, you know, I'm trying to do my job from home, right? And so the association is important to me, but it's the seventh most important thing that I have to do in my day. And guess what? You're just asking me what, for one more thing that I have to provide you. And, and that's where we get into the whole thing where the CRP, the person that manages um, components at the, at this, for the association headquarters, instead of being a call that we love to get because they're mentoring us and helping us, we're dodging it like there's some kind of bill collector because we know we owe them something and we just don't want to deal with that right now. So, so let's give them a tool like Bill Highway that does all this stuff for them and then captures the data automatically and you can get it, you can see it yourself and, and I don't have to send it to you. And oh, by the way, it doesn't happen at the end of the year. It happens in real time where we have an opportunity to influence it and impact it. Um, and, and can really help drive chapter performance higher, right? So, so through Bill Highway, we know how many events are being held. We know um, how many people are coming to those events. We know how many, um, uh, we know what types of programs they're offering. And what happens then is the very definition of what a high, com high performing component is get becomes defined within Bill Highway because we can measure that against their peers, right? And so why is it, for example, that chapter A has 42% of their members attending their events and chapter B averages 82% of their members, right? So let's find those bright spots. Let's, what we talked about at CX and, and let's identify what they're doing differently so that we can help everyone 
elevate their game, which means what? We're going to um, increase member engagement. We're going to increase retention. We're going to increase chapter revenue. We're going to increase association revenue, right? It's that virtuous cycle um, that happens because we have access to the data. Right. So, so Mark, let me just ask this question because yep. seeing lots of good chatter, people are really sharing um, how they're doing their annual reports and they're collecting it. And a lot of this is self-reporting. And I know you're kind of talking about this, but I just want to make sure I'm clear. Is that first of all, I can get this data as the events happen. So I'm kind of getting kind of a little bit of a real time. Um, and is it's in it's part and parcel of the system as opposed to asking a chapter to submit data. Is is that am I getting that right? You're getting that exactly right. Yeah. So the whole idea again, Peggy, is let's give the chapters tools first to make their job easier, right? Mm -hmm. So let's make accounting, banking, budgeting, mm -hmm. um, um, uh, events, collecting payments from members when they have a credit card, they want to buy a check. Let's, let's make all of that day-to-day -day stuff or month-to-month -month stuff easy for them. And then why we're doing that, and they use Bill Highway, our system organically collects all this data that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And that's what we share back to the headquarters. So for example, this chart that you're looking at, all the data is here in Bill Highway, and now you can export it into whatever type of um, data visualization tool that you want. So this is Tableau, right? So if we have the data, then the data becomes things that we can look at. And I can see based upon whatever criteria are important for my individual association, um, um, how folks are performing, who my, my, my high performers, my low performers, and then, and then what specifically is causing that performance to be different so that I can help my low performers do better and be more like my top performers. Mm -hmm. and, and let me just give a, a plug here, by the way, too. As I mentioned, this is Tableau. Um, one of Bill Highway's data partners, um, folks may be familiar with a company called Gravitate. They have a data analytics tool called Nucleus that we integrate with. One of the data charts that I showed earlier in the presentation is actually a nucleus chart, right? So, so Bill Highway integrates with any number of AMSs. So there's, there's probably very few AMSs that are represented in our webinar today that Bill Highway uh, isn't either integrating with today or can't. Um, and then there might be data visualization tools or whatever. So, we, so we're we're not requiring that someone make changes to their existing technology. We're just integrating into whatever that existing technology you know, system is today. So hopefully that answers your question a little bit. Yes. So now, go ahead. No, I was gonna say that, so the, 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 when I'm just, I have to just reflect that this is a powerful tool here and I'd love to hear from folks in the, in the chat. If you were able to show this, how might that make your your job, your decision making, your budgeting, um, uh, sort of easier. I don't, I don't know. This is the, this is this is a pretty cool. So anyway. yeah, and and showing it, Peggy, is a great question. But what if we were to show the before and after? What if we were able to show? You know what? In two thousand and twenty, this was the performance of our components, right? And mm -hmm. they averaged in total. Um, you know, 62% of their members attending events. And we had highs and lows of this. Mm -hmm. And now a year after Bill Highway, we've increased that member engagement by, you know, to whatever. And oh, by the way, in doing that, we have seen an increase in retention at our association by X, X. because um, we're better uh, understanding what our chapters are doing and we're better able to mentor them and help them. Mm -hmm. And oh, by the way, We've identified non-members who are attending and our, and our membership team has now enrolled them, right? And so all of these things point to revenue. And so what if we could not just measure it, but also show the results of what that measurement is? Right. That's and the key. I, and I don't want to, I don't want to sidetrack too much, but I just saw a comment and I think, and I thought to myself at one point, the same thing someone just said. We keep giving our chapters tools and they, you know, their adoption isn't always great. And um, I know that this system, th 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 this concept of a holistic tool here is a, is a little bit different in that 
they, you're not asking them to learn something new. You're asking them to go ahead and do their their banking or whatever. And then this, and as because you, you said at the beginning that this information sort of comes along with that. Yes. Yeah. So so we're not asking them to use something necessarily that's new. Mm -hmm. Everyone needs to file 990s. Let's give them an easy way to do it. Everyone needs to balance their bank account or their credit card statements um, every month. Let's give them an easy way to do it. Bill Highway almost becomes like a chapter in a box solution, right? Ooh. So if you're a chat, you know, we t I can't tell you how many times we talk to associations that have chapters and maybe they have a golf outing and someone comes and wants to pay by credit card. And guess what's happening? People are writing down credit card numbers on napkins, taking it home and doing whatever they have to do with it. Right. So we got to we got to end that type of stuff. So so it's not getting them to do something um, that that they don't want to do. It's mm -hmm. actually giving them tool sets um, that they mm -hmm. love. So when we go in and talk to chapters about Bill Highway, 90 percent of the, the hands in the room mm -hmm. go up and say, Mark, this is amazing. This would change our life. How do I how what is the fastest way from right now that I can yeah. get on this? And yeah. so typically what we see is when we roll out Bill Highway and Association, we have about 80% chapter adoption within the first year. And then, you know, there's always, I call them stinker pots. There's probably a better word for it. There's always those chapters that are hard to deal with. They're stuck in their ways. They are skeptical of everything you do. You know, they come along last. And how we get those mm -hmm. to come along is because Bill Highway winds up almost going viral throughout an association's oh, chapter right. system. Right. And so you've got peers talking to peers about how much better life is after Bill Highway than it was before. And that kind of fuels that adoption. And then the data that we've been talking about just flows from there. So if we're gonna go virtual, can we go global? Without question. So, okay. um, so Bill Highway is, um, is a solution that works for um, both you know, domestic or U.S. denominated associations as well as global associations, mm -hmm. um, and and a lot of us. And I, I don't want to get too technical and, and be here giving a commercial a commercial about Bill right. Highway, but a lot of associations have difficulty supporting their international chapters, mm -hmm. right? And so I don't I don't know many associations today that are not looking at growing internationally as a way right. to grow membership, right? right? So how do we give tools to those chapters? and support, so we don't have a two-class system. We've right. got our US chapters, then we have everyone else, right? right. Um, and you can't really do that. And if you're really looking to maximize international membership, then you've got to maximize your investment in international chapters and help right. them. Um, and everyone has difficulty with, um, well, payments. How do, how do I, you know, I've got a chapter in Dublin, Ireland. How do I, how do I deal with that? So absolutely, Bill Highway is a, is a, is a global or international solution, just not a US-based right. solution. So stinker pots. Yeah, you like that, huh? Yeah, and we're going to stick with that one, right? Right, right, crew, right, crew, stinker pots. That's a much nicer way of talking about those chapters that aren't quite there. So the real cool thing is, is if we had real time access to uh, component performance data, we might have less stinker pots. I mean, I'm just saying because if you if you can, someone said it would be really cool to. I saw one of the the chat. This chat, by the way, is amazing. Um, the, there was a comment about, and then we could get together focus groups with the low performing chapters. I mean, I just think that there's just so, so much cool stuff. And let me just um, uh, uh, introduce the next concept because I think that the, that the important thing um, is that is the component financial data. And um, with the lovely help of, of Deirdre Reed, we have done, uh, I say we, I like to take credit for it. Okay, it's on Bill Highway. Um, done a series of chapters in crisis and talked a lot about this conversation of, of, of how difficult the financial side of things is and how that can go astray before some other things. And sometimes it's because we don't have great volunteers, but part of it's because the systems are a little bit more difficult and it comes down to that kind of that administrative stress. And so, um, Mark, I'd, I'd love to just sort of pick your brain a little bit on on the whole finances part of it, because ultimately you're sitting on a on a banking on a banking platform. So, yep. and that may be the that may be the door opener for us in our components. Go ahead. Yeah. So let's talk about this, right? So we said early on we're going to talk about three main groups of data: engagement data, chapter performance data, 
and then chapter or component financial data. The financial data is where everyone starts to get a little bit uncomfortable. And the reason why is because I'm gonna bet that most people on the webinar today, Peggy, their chapters are their own separate legal entities, right? So they don't own their chapters, their chapters have their own EIN numbers, they file their own taxes or they use a group exemption or, but they're their own separate legal entities. And so the conversation then begins to um, turn towards, hmm, I don't know how much financial data I really think that I can get our chapters to share or that we even want to see, right? right? There's, it's, kind of a, it's kind of a touchy subject to talk about that. So let's talk about a touchy subject, right? So remember what I said earlier, chapters, affiliates, networks, whatever you call them, love Bill Highway. When we show it to them, they want it because it helps them so much. Mm -hmm. Somebody once told me, Mark, this is like the Staples Easy button. This is what I need. I need that. I just got to push that. That, that Staples Easy button, right? So, so the concept that we begin to talk about then is um, quid pro quo, right? So, so quid pro quo means I do something for you. You do something for me. So chapters, I know that you want to use Bill Highway. So we're going to use that want, that desire to get them to give up something, which is some visibility or transparency around their finances. And the cool thing about the way the Bill Highway solution works is that we can make that visibility as little or as vast as we want. And every association gets to decide that mm -hmm. differently. So if you just want to, for example, see whatever year-end information that you're already collecting, right? Then that's fine. It's in Bell Highway and we can create access for that. But we've got, other, we've got other associations that say, you know what? These are our affiliates. They've signed an affiliate agreement. We're sharing dues with them or we're financing their operations in some part. And, and we expect that they are going to operate within certain principles of fiscal prudence and um, et cetera, et cetera. And so we wanna be able to see more of that. So Bill Highway can, can allow visibility all the way down to the very chart of accounts line level detail. And, and we've had associations that have said, you know what, we've had our chapters are spending more money on um, board retreats than they are on members, right? Or you've got some chapters that they're just hoarding their money and they're growing this big bank account and they're not spending it and investing it. So, so the visibility um, can be um, structured in any way that makes sense for that particular association from a lot of visibility down to, um, you know, down to nothing at all. So, so but, but isn't it important to know if you've got a chapter that's not even really financially viable, their whole business model may not be working. They may be losing money from year to year. So, so we don't wanna know that information because we're nosy. We wanna know that information because we wanna help them do better. And so now I can benchmark again, going back to this whole kind of chapter performance data, I can benchmark and see, you know, these chapters are pulling in a lot of money in these areas. They've got sponsorships or they're running these types of programs. Um, or, or whatever that might be. And these other chapters are really sucking wind at that. So I'm gonna help them understand what these other chapters are doing to be so financially strong. Um, and let me give you an example. So, so, and I think I can share their name. If not, we'll edit it out later. Um, but one of Bill Highway's clients is, um, is a, a association called ASQ, the American Society for, Qu for Quality. They've got, I don't know, about 70,000 members. 250 components, their components operate, I think in 150 different countries around the world. Um, what, what they were able to determine through Bill Highway is that they had a few chapters that were making a lot of money this year during COVID hosting virtual training events um, that they were charging a couple hundred dollars, I believe, for members to attend. And so these were strong chapters. Um, they had good leadership. They had, um, 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 you know, thriving memberships, right? 
And they're offering all of these programs that, by the way, members want these programs. If I can't go to my, my national event that I usually go to, offer me ways to still continue networking, still continue to grow in, in my knowledge through my local chapter, right? So, so we saw in ASQ that there are some chapters that are just hitting home runs with this and others weren't doing as much. And, and as ASQ began to look into that, they begin to, began to find out, well, some of these small chapters don't have the ability just to, to do that kind of stuff. But what we learned is that, well, why don't we use these stronger chapters and allow other chapters members who are smaller chapters to attend those virtual events. And if you, if you charge $100 for it, give $90 to the chapter that's hosting it and give $10 to the chapter whose member you know, went to it, right? And so, so now we're serving members better. We're growing revenue for our chapters. And again, that virtuous cycle all comes in because we start to see the data. So, so Mark, I just want to, I just want to sort of pause and shine a light on what you just said because it made my, I, I, you guys probably couldn't see the light bulb go off in my head, but one of the topics that we've been asked to have a webinar on is mentoring, and part of the issues about mentoring is is getting the right people together. And you just struck a chord because if I can have this visualization and I can see who's doing well, I can take the folks and I can say, come over here. Let me let let me help you be sort of a part of it. That was part one, but part two, this idea of driving collaboration at the local level. Like I don't have the capacity to put this webinar on. You do. Let's do some kind of an opportunity where the members get this rich content and we get a little bit of it, but you are able to expand the, the people that are attending. Um, anyway, I just wanted to, I, I just, that was a, that was a, you know, one of those light bulb moments for me. So I needed to say that, sorry. Yeah, I, I, and I appreciate you sharing that. And, and the way that I think of that is one of the difficulties that is inherent in being an association is we have this multi-tiered structure, right? So you've got mm -hmm. some headquarters or global or national organization at top. You have whatever that middle layer is, chapters, affiliates, whatever you call them, you have members, right? And it's a very disconnected um, relationship. So headquarters has uh, relationships with members. Chapters have relationships with members. Chapters don't really have relationships back and forth. So Bill Highway comes into that structure and almost like a hub sits in the middle and we connect all of those nodes so that data can flow and information can flow and we can have more visibility and everybody can help each other and be more collaborative, right? But we do that within certain boundaries and guidelines where we share what's appropriate and what, and you know, not everybody gets to see everything, right? So, so but the concept that you're talking about is how do we unify this, this disconnected association so that we can all serve members better and and, and as I know you're, yeah, I know you're getting to the next slide, but I just want to read this. I, I love Brianne. <laughs> it's beautiful because it becomes, we're not nosy. We just want to help and that it's, um, and that it's a great way of building trust, but I love it. It's such a great harmony. What, awesome. I love the word harmony. Yes. Um, that's a, that's a, that's a very powerful word, word. And it's something that we need more of in the world today, but that's a whole nother, <laughs> that's a whole nother conversation. So I want to go back to this, um, this concept of yes, please. A, a chapter in a box. So remember early on that I said, Bill, Bill Highway is a software solution, just like your AMS is, right? But we're a software solution that's built on top of and integrated into a banking platform. And so many chapters have a lot of difficulty with things related to finances, right? So. I have to set up a PayPal account and I have to get one of these little square devices so that I can swipe credit cards. Um, and all oh, this member wants to pay by check. So I've got to go to the bank. Um, and then I've got to post that to QuickBooks because I've got to generate monthly board reports and I've got to send financial data to headquarters and ultimately I've got to pay taxes. And oh, now PayPal is sending me um, monthly statements and I've got to reconcile those and, 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 and so, yeah, this is why people don't want to volunteer, right? So let's drop in a, a solution that automates and does all of that for them. So one of the things that we've found, and, and Bill Highway has been doing this now for 20 years, but one of the things that we found early on is that wherever money is coming into a chapter, there's mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that has to happen, right? So that stuff, I just mentioned some of it. 
And typically chapters get money three different ways, right? So one way is some associations, um, when I join as a member at, at the headquarters, right? We share a portion of that dues down to the chapter, right? As a, as a remittance. Um, chapters have events they get, right? That they collect money for. And then sometimes they receive in-person payments. They may get a $500 check from a company that's sponsoring an event, or they um, may have someone I mentioned comes up to a golf outing and we've got, you know, a raffle for the closest to the pin. And, and here, you know, I want to write a check to be in that or whatever that is. So Bill Highway has tools that allow all of this money to be collected. And what we do is when we set Bill Highway up for the chapter, we mimic their chart of accounts. Money comes into their Bill Highway account, and then we automatically post all of the journal entries for them so that nobody has to do that manual accounting work. And so what, what winds up happening is chapters actually have a choice to completely do away with their local bank if they want to, because Bill Highway can become their bank. And, and so, so let's just talk about this for a minute. I'll try not to get into too long of an explanation. But most of our chapters have local bank accounts, right? And so what happens every time the president or the treasurer turn over? And by the way, a healthy chapter ought to have leadership turning over regularly. If you've got the same yes. leaders in there, for the past seven years, then that's a sign that you do not have a, a vibrant, dynamic, healthy chapter that's growing new leadership, right? So every time those officers turn over, guess what happens? I got to walk down to my local bank account. Sometimes the new officer and the old officer have to go together, try to get that to happen today. And we've got to sign signature cards. We have to have people removed from accounts, all of that type of stuff. Bill Highway eliminates all of that. Money flows into their Bill Highway bank account. If they want to keep their local account, they can. And then we can just sweep the money out automatically. But what most chapters opt to do, and by most, I mean like 90%, they keep their money in their Bill Highway bank account and they use Bill Highway to do their banking. So their, their account is FDI and seems short. It, it, it grows just like it would at their local bank, right? But now what happens is they can do all of their spending out of Bill Highway as well. So chapters have bills, right? They may have to pay the caterer for this event that we had or whatever that might be. And so as they spend out of Bill Highway and they can spend with us, they can have check stock, like physical paper check stock that prints out of a local printer through their Bill Highway platform. Um, we give them online bill pay and we give them, if they want these things called prepaid cards. So prepaid card, it's like a debit card, except I load money onto it. Right, so, so, I, so I'm, I don't know, Columbus, Ohio chapter, I've got this prepay card and one of my volunteers needs to go get some things at Staples. I put $100 on this card, I go spend at Staples. Um, I've just eliminated anyone ever having to use their own personal credit card, which means that I've eliminated expense reports, which is just all in all of this mm. convoluted, complicated stuff, right? That we make people do. But what happens now is as they spend, those journal entries are posted automatically. And so if anyone on the call is kind of accounting minded, visualize an income statement. Bill Highway is completely populating the entire left side and right side of an income statement without anyone having to do accounting work, which means that all their financial reports, board reports, bank account reconciliations, credit card reconciliations, all of that is done automatically for them. And at the end of the year, when it comes time to file their 990s, all this data is within our system, which makes for a simple export for them to go out and file their 990. So, so this is why chapters begin to love us. So what I have on the screen right now is we have a mobile app that sits on their phone, right? And if someone has a credit card, they swipe it through the Bill Highway mobile app. If someone has a check, take a picture of the check, just probably like we all do in our personal lives, and it settles right into their Bill Highway bank account. All the journal entries um, are automated, get updated. Their budget, if they're using that, gets updated. Um, as they spend money out of Bill Highway, so, so let's talk about just for a minute um, this concept of preventing fraud at a chapter, right? And so it's another kind of one of those words that nobody wants to talk about. So it's two types of fraud. There's accidental fraud and, 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 and intentional fraud, right? So accidental fraud would be 
Um, I get a fake bill. I'm the treasurer. I think it's legit. I pay it and it goes off to, mm -hmm. um, you know, some scam company in Russia. And I bet if we asked in the poll, Peggy, how many people have experienced that, we'd have more people that have experienced that than you might imagine. So Bill Highway, our system requires two person approval for any expense, but we make it easy to do that approval because we build in an electronic workflow. So let's just say, for example, I'm the treasurer and Peggy, you're the president. I go in to pay that ABC catering $200 for this event that we just had. I do that in Bill Highway, just like I'm doing online bill pay at home. But at home, when I do that, that bill goes out, right? And gets paid. In Bill Highway, you get a notification. It says, hey, Mark Prius is trying to pay ABC catering $200, $200 for this event. Do you approve or not? You click approve and then the payment goes out. Everything that just happened is time date, dated and stamped within our system for audit purposes. And I've just put a workflow in place that makes sure no one intentionally or accidentally can spend money out of our chapter's account with at least two people approving it and making sure it's legit. Mark, right? I gotta stop you for just a yeah, second please. because that's another bright spot. Um, how many of us have done like we angst over how to best to train our treasurers and also how do how many of us angst over helping our chapters develop workflows i mean i just have to i have to say you know i've been th th those are two really cool things and of course it, it it's really about your your next slide which is attract and retain i want to ask one quick question if i can somebody asked just really kind of big sky or you know uh, High level, high level, what, how long is a migration plan if somebody was interested in sort of, because this just feels like there's got an awful lot of stuff going on, so. It does. Um, so I would say, so there's, there's, there's two parts in answer to that question. From the time that somebody says, yeah, we want Bill Highway, let's go. And we start a project together until the time that it's up and running, I'm going to say four months. And then, but the chapter part is easy, right? So that four months is integrating into um, your national um, AMS and it's identifying and configuring all the business rules that you wanna follow, right? So every client does business a little bit differently. Every association does business a little bit differently. And we configure our system to accommodate what all those different business rules are. So that's, that takes that mm -hmm. amount of time. Why we do that, we put together what we call a chapter advisory group or whatever you call your, Ooh, your components, okay. right? And we want to get those, um, those chapters that are, that are really anxious to do something like this. So we've got 100 chapters. Let's get 10 that are going to be our advocates. They're, they're the opposite of the stinker pots, right? They're the ones that we have really good relationships with. They want to create a, they want to be part of creating a legacy for the association. Um, and, and they love this concept about using Bill Highway. We get them up and running first. We actually mm -hmm. involve them in the project so that they can help define how Bill Highway works. One of the things that we have, um, we should do a webinar sometime is on, on how to, how to create a great chapter project. Because yes. some, so many times at headquarters, we think, oh, this is amazing. We're going to push it out to our chapters. We haven't involved our chapters. And we then ask, well, why don't you like it, right? Um, so we use that chapter advisory group to help do that. And then by the time that we are ready to roll it out at the end of that four month or five month period, whatever that is, to the chapters, um, there's been so much talk that has bubbled up over time that chapters are clamoring to get on board. And that's why I said we typically have um, 80% um, of our chapters get on Bill Highway within the first year. To put a chapter on, it takes us a day. That, that part's the easy part, right? It's very simple for your chapters. And, and, and again, I don't want to, I'm trying really hard not to keep giving commercials about Bill Highway, but we have a team at Bill Highway that does all the training for chapter leaders. We do all the support for chapter leaders. So if a chapter leader has a question about, hmm, how do I stop payment on this check? Or how do I run this report or whatever? They call Bill Highway, we walk them through that and help them. And so there's a whole support kind of um, okay. um, structure that goes along behind this as well. I know you don't wanna do, uh, and, and this was really intended to talk about the power of data, and but I'm glad that you're giving us you're answering some specific questions about the Bill Highway platform too, because I think that that kind of helps all of us get a little bit better of a sense of what we're talking about. 
Um, I know we've only got about five minutes left. Um, uh, I, I think that you know you you've really uh, and you, uh, you've made so many awesome points about this whole idea of attracting and retaining, and um, I'd love to just get folks to um, kind of throw out there in the chat that if you if, if you have this access to the it, no let, let me rephrase this actually <laughs> when we talked I want to say what if your chapters had easy access to the financial element and that drove your ability to help them have access to financial data that also fed into you and fed into the system? I mean, what if, right? Um, folks, I mean, I, I just, I look at this and I go, wow, um, this is the kind of things that we've been, we, we've been asking for as, as CRPs. And um, I think, the, and, and I just, I, I, the kind of the neat concepts that, that I kind of saw in the chat kind of really already said this, which is that it's about having this kind of a, a really valuable insight um, into what's happening so that you can have really intentional conversations with the chapters. And, and let's not forget intentional conversations with your C-suite, right? Intentional conversations with your board all of a sudden, um, I mean, I, I feel like we're, we, we move from being babysitters and, um, and timekeepers and naggers to coachers, to mentors, to member engagers. And I think, um, I, th I, I think that, I think honestly, that's perhaps the most, most powerful one. Now guys, I have to tell you that I wanted this slide on here because after we had talked through this presentation, I said, oh my, it is like a golden goose. Um, so I just, uh, you know, you can see the slides when they get there and read all those details. I'm just, I'm just, uh, I, I feel like, uh, let me take you back to what was it three years ago at the annual conference and we did a hackathon. And in that hackathon, um, a group of people, two different of our groups actually came up with a chapter in the box. And one of the things that they wanted were all, were all many of these elements. Yes, Andrea was there, yes. I mean, this is, we, we talked about the golden goose and um, I just thank you, Mark, for, for sharing all this with us because I really feel like it kind of has done that. Now, can I do a plug for you, Mark? Sure. Okay. So, um, you know, our goal here, guys, was to talk really about three critical elements. What could we do to ramp up our components program if we had member engagement data, if we had component performance data, if we had component financial data? So we were really just wanted to talk to you about data and the power of data. The reality is, is the best way to talk about it was for Mark to talk about what he knows, which is the Bill Highway, um, uh, you know, the, truly the, the, the Bill Highway product. And so... Um, I told him that we really should say, you know, uh, this is this is this is great, but you know, get a demo. And um, look, there's Mark's cell phone. Um, you can start right now texting him, telling him, you know, that the director of growth. Uh, you hope he doesn't put weight on during the holidays. And <laughs> lonely, <laughs> send me pictures stuff. of your your pets and your holiday lights. Oh my God, pictures of your pets, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> Um, we are just one minute before, and I think we got, um, I think we got many of the questions, but one of the questions that came was, will we get the slide deck? Will we get the chat? And one of the things, um, you know, Bill Highway and Mariner started this series of webinars and our goal was to create community. And so we do all of this in our own time and we share back 100% of what, what we've gotten here. So you will get uh, any and all of it. And because we are a community, um, we try to do lots of different formats for the community. So we are having a hello 2021 CRP coffee chat on December 29th. It's a countdown to New Year's Day. Um, listen, it's 45 minutes. It's just going to be a really fun informal chat. We're doing it at the beginning of the day. Sorry for those of you that are on the on the all the way on the West Coast, but please, if you can, join us for that free and. Popular demand from CEX was to talk more about the concept of coaching for volunteers. <coughs> Excuse me. So on January 6th, we are going to do a coaching um, volunteer success. So 
mark the the big hand just went to the 12 the little hands on the one yeah. um, we pulled it all together i want to thank you so much for your time and being able to help us have this conversation around really what is the power of data um and let's see is there anything else we need to talk about except for thank you <laughs> thanks mark thanks to all you of bet. you on the call today reach out to mark um reach out to of course sarah and uh, charlotte were being behind the scenes very quiet all of us are here to help you build the community <laughs>